This video was made possible thanks to CuriosityStream. Watch TLDR ad-free and get exclusive videos from us by signing up to the CuriosityStream Nebula bundle deal at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDR global. As you've probably seen in the news, Putin has seriously upped his nuclear rhetoric. When he first declared war on February 24th, he warned that anyone who interfered would see, quote, such consequences that you have never encountered in your history, apparently referring to a nuclear first strike. A few days later, on February 27th, in a state-managed national referendum on constitutional reforms, Belarus allowed Russian forces and nuclear weapons to be deployed in Belarus on a permanent basis. And on the same day, Putin held a televised press conference with his defence minister and General Gerasimov, during which he complained about the unfriendly economic sanctions and aggressive statements imposed by the West, before ominously warning that Russia's deterrence forces would move to, quote, a special mode of combat duty. In effect, this means that Russia's massive nuclear arsenal is now on higher alert than it was previously. And when pushed on this in a press conference later in the day, the Kremlin's press secretary laid blame squarely on Liz Truss, the UK's foreign secretary stating that there were unacceptable statements about possible conflict situations and even confrontations and clashes between NATO and Russia. I will not name the authors of these statements, although it was the British Foreign Secretary. Here, the Kremlin is probably referring to comments Truss made on Sunday, when she said that she would back Brits who travelled to Ukraine to fight against Russia, something that other government ministers had been wary of endorsing as well as her warning that there could be conflict between Russia and NATO. Anyway, this announcement from the Kremlin was followed by a slew of terrifying headlines about the prospect of imminent and total nuclear war. But is this true? Is it time to hide in your basement with a load of tinned food? Well, no, at least not yet. Despite this escalation, the chance of nuclear war in the near future are still pretty low. Metacolus, a site which essentially finds people who reliably make accurate predictions and weights their predictions about the future accordingly, puts the chance of nuclear detonation before 2024 at 5%. Even then, this is unlikely to entail full-on nuclear war, with the most likely nuclear detonation being a relatively small tactical nuke in Ukraine or detonation in the sea somewhere as a show of force. Full-scale nuclear war between Russia and the West, i.e. the rest of the world, would only be possible if the nuclear weapon was directed at a NATO member, and even then it wouldn't be inevitable, as it's entirely plausible that the other side wouldn't retaliate in kind. Now, a 5% chance of nuclear detonation obviously is way too high for comfort, but it's perhaps lower than you might expect, given that the leader of the most heavily nuclear-armed state is currently putting his nuclear weapons on high alert. This is because we're still a long way from a deliberate nuclear war. Russia has four levels of nuclear readiness. Constant, elevated, military danger, and full. For all of the dramatic rhetoric, Putin has only moved his nuclear forces up from level 4, constant, to level 3, elevated. Obviously, this is still cause for concern. But the point we're making is that we're not just a few minutes away from total annihilation. The West has also been careful not to further escalate the situation. Most NATO members have been clear that they don't want a no-fly zone over Ukraine to avoid direct conflict with Russia. And the EU recently backtracked on its promise to supply fighter jets to Ukraine, which would be launched from the Baltic states. The French finance minister also rode back on his comments that the EU would be waging, quote, all-out economic and financial war on Russia, telling French news agency AFP that he had misspoken. And on Wednesday, the US announced that they'd be cancelling a scheduled ICBM launch to avoid escalating tensions. The exception in this regard, though, has been Japan, where influential former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe suggested that Japan should consider hosting US nuclear weapons to deter Chinese aggression in Asia. This is a big move and would mark a break from Japan's historic three non-nuclear principles, that it will not produce or possess nuclear weapons or allow it on its territory. 
Even in Japan, though, incumbent politicians were quick to reject Abe's suggestion. Japan's current prime minister, who represents the constituency of Hiroshima, called Abe's suggestion unacceptable and insisted that Japan would not be scrapping the three non-nuclear principles anytime soon. You get the point, though. While this is a worrying development, we're still a long way away from Putin actually using nuclear weapons, and the West has done all it can to avoid further escalation. Nonetheless, there is still a cause for concern. Even 5% is too high a chance. If we assume that the annual odds of a nuclear war are 5%, then nuclear war becomes more likely than not in about 13 years. And even if we take the odds down to just 1%, nuclear war still becomes more likely than not within 69 years. There's also still space for escalation. Western leaders have to strike a delicate balance between avoiding a nuclear war and convincing Putin that there's at least a chance they could use their weapons to preserve the efficacy of their nuclear deterrent. For example, if Western leaders just said, nope, we're not using our weapons, then Putin could hypothetically threaten using Russian nukes to exact whatever concessions he wanted from the West, say, keeping Sweden and Finland out of NATO, or moving NATO troops out of the Baltic states. Essentially, Western leaders have an incentive to match Putin's nuclear escalation, so if tensions continue, we could see a further escalation on both sides. Even if no one actually wants a nuclear war, they're all just posturing to maintain the efficacy of their deterrent. And the problem is that escalation seriously increases the chance of an accidental nuclear war. As nuclear readiness levels increase, safeguards against accidental use naturally fall away, leaving nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert and therefore increasing the chances of some sort of nuclear accident. Worryingly too, history is littered with examples of terrifying nuclear near misses, cases where we nearly entered into a full-scale nuclear war due to some sort of misinformation or miscalculation. To give just one example of many, in September 1983, a Soviet early warning satellite showed that the US had launched five land-based missiles at the Soviet Union. The satellite was supposedly in working order, but it had actually picked up the reflection of the sun on the top of the clouds. Fortunately, the Soviet officer on duty disobeyed procedure and reported it as a false alarm before he even knew that was the case. Petrov has since admitted the decision could have gone either way, describing it as a 50-50. Regardless, you see where we're going. The 1% chance of nuclear war is still way, way too high, let alone a 5% chance. And even if no one wants it, history shows us that accidental nuclear war is still a possibility. And it's not the only thing we have to worry about either. Nuclear war is clearly catastrophic, but economic warfare is also worrying and has the potential to harm lives and even kill the poorest in our society. So we made a video discussing the potential economic impact of this conflict, and that's available exclusively on Nebula. The streaming platform my creator friends and I have teamed up to build, but we don't need to worry about demonetization or the algorithm. Over there, you can find all of our latest videos ad-free, but we're also posting exclusive Nebula Plus videos over there too. We've already got four of them live, and it's not just us either. All of our favorite educational creators are also there like Wendover Productions, Real Life Law, Polymatter, Legal Eagle, Half as Interesting, and many others. But wait, we said this video was brought to you by CuriosityStream, right? Well, as the platform full of the best documentaries online, they naturally love educational creators like us. And as such, we've worked out a deal whereby if you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description, you'll also get free access to Nebula. And that's not a trial either. You'll get access for as long as you remember. And to make things even better, for a limited time, they're offering a deal where you can get 26% off their already low price, making an entire year of both services less than $15. That's less than $15 a year for all of your favorite educational creators, as well as superb documentaries on CuriosityStream. Signing up at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDR global or clicking the link below not only gets you the deal, but also directly supports TLDR and educational creators on the platform more generally, as well as getting your original content and an ad-free experience.